right? So there was something sensitive in the forest, a sensitive thing, as I've called it, right, that Jim Penniston was sent out to investigate. So something was outside the perimeter fence. Penniston's description of the object is unreliable. It is likely that some personnel know exactly what it was, and there was concern that there was radiation present, and there was a cover-up about what it was. There were the conclusions from the program that I made. Now, after I put that program out, someone sent me a video, right, from a YouTuber, and that video um, featured the testimony of another guy who worked at Rendlesham, who is stating something completely different to the UFO witnesses, right? Uh, and his statements line up with my conclusions. Um, so we're going to look at that now. So this is a completely alternative explanation for what happened at Rendlesham Forest in 1980. So this video was featured on a show called The Real Jimmy Roberts, who's a YouTuber. Um, and the show was entitled The Truth About the Rendlesham Forest uh, UFO, an exclusive interview featuring a guy called Bill. Now, Bill is not his re real name, and he claims to have been working at Bentwaters around the time of the Rendlesham Forest incident, and he claimed that he, that he knows what happened. Now, in the interview, um, he's under a non-disclosure agreement, so the guy who was interviewing him is asking leading questions so that he can answer without breaking his non-disclosure agreement. Um, now, let me just give you a summary of what he claims happened at Rendlesham. So, as you may know, there are two military bases. There's um, Bentwaters at the top here, and then Woodbridge. These are the runways, some distance apart. All right. The UFO incident is alleged to have occurred outside the gate at the Woodbridge base. So, this red dot here is the east gate, where people were coming to and from. Um, the red dot there is where... Jim Penniston said he saw the landed triangular craft. And then we've got in the field here, this is where Larry Warren said there was a, a craft two nights later. And then this red dot here is where I think it's Bustenza has claimed the UFO was. All right. I will summarize what is stated in this YouTube video. According to them, there was some sort of inspection coming up at one of the bases, possibly inspection of equipment. And they weren't ready for the inspection. So what they did in order to pass the inspection, they were transferring some kit, some piece of military hardware from one base to the other. Now this was going against protocols, possibly because you're not supposed to switch kit in a test or in an inspection, right? And secondly, because it, it may have involved nuclear material being transported from one base to the other. So apparently what they've done is they've had this, this object, whatever it was, whether it missile launcher or I don't know what it was. They didn't state what it was, but it was taken on the back roads between the uh, Bentwaters base and the Woodbridge base. And they are linked with these little country roads. And what's alleged to have happened is when they were um, towing this object, whatever it was, this piece of hardware, they went along this road here and they were supposed to turn right and take it through the east gate, the object, right? But they missed this turning. They missed that turning. And they continued along this road. And they got to the point where they couldn't turn around again with this um, piece of military hardware. So they got stuck. Right? So the military police then got involved, uh, who send light alls out to try and get it out of the woods. That accounts for all of the lights in the woods. All right? And that accounts for the sensitivity. So according to this source, right, the whole... Rendlesham UFO incident is a cover-up for a piece of military hardware that they were transporting illegally from one base to the other. And it may well be that the Americans were doing this behind the MOD's back because the RAF liaison officer was on holiday. There was no British at either of the bases. Right, so this may have been an MOD or an Air Force inspection that they needed a piece of kit transferred from one base to the other and they got stuck, right? Imagine how embarrassing that would be. You've got a piece of hardware that might have some nuclear um, signature on it and it's stuck near a farmer's field, right? So you can imagine how sensitive that would be. Okay, so I'm just going to show you a quick clip from that program where the witness, Bill, explains what's supposed to have happened. 
right where your pointer's at. Right. Just up to the left, you see a, an L. It's a white L shape. It's a roadway that curves. It makes an L. There you go, right there. That's an L. You see that? The long part of that L is a giant road. That's a long, 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 long road. Right. And isn't it funny how it ends where the UFO landed? Go back up to the right there where your hand is. That's a triangle. You see, stay right yes. there. Just down to the right, that road turns off to the right. It, it, it actually can go both directions, but it turns off to the right very sharply. And it comes down towards the encroachment area. Right there. Yeah, that's the road. Come on down. Come on down. There you go. So if a person wasn't really trained, in my experience, the reason why I would never send anyone who wasn't trained out to do this type of a thing is because they would get so comfortable at night driving down that road thinking they're going to see the turnoff. They might pass it because there's no signs and they might end up somewhere down where they shouldn't be or couldn't turn around. That might happen. That's why we get trained not to do that type of thing. Some of you might be sitting thinking, well, come on, Richard. Um, how do we know that that guy is telling the truth? Um, well, I thought about that and that interview, which you can get online, uh, I got Genevieve Lewis to analyze Bill's words for deception and he passed 90%. So this is the conclusion of Bill's interview. She concluded that Bill does not reliably report what he did on the base, but his language very strongly supports that he did work there and he knows what happened. So this is Bent Waters, this guy worked at. He shows some sensitivity to how long he worked there or perhaps when he worked there. He reliably reports that they did not see a UFO. He reliably reports knowing what happened. There are no needs to persuade and little qualifying language in his sentences that contain key information. They are strong and reliable on form. There is no unexpected language or missing language. He does well to explain what happened without saying directly what happened and breaching his non-disclosure agreement. He uses if and allows for the possibility. There is evidence within his language that he is angered by the UFO story and that his sense of pride in his job is high. This would not be present in the language of someone who did not work at the base. His pride in his work is evident and it gives credibility to his account. There is no deception present. right? Because I know people will say, well Richard, there's 20 Rendlesham witnesses. Yeah, but if they're all under certain conditions to lie about this, right? you need to find the reliable witness. And the same applies with Manchester. It doesn't matter how many witnesses you've got. What matters is whether they're telling the truth.